Good morning guys and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I've been having an eventful couple of days, the last couple of days. Um, issue with the water heater over here, I guess we'll take a walk over there. Uh, it would not ignite, it would light and then it would go off like a minute after, like it just, it was not cooperating. So our electric portion of the water heater hasn't worked for quite a while now. And honestly, I just haven't really put too much effort into fixing it because the gas works and we just use the gas. But as you can see, it's running now, it's on, it's nice and hot, it's heating everything up. But it would not ignite. It was click, click, click. I saw the spark. Uh, I took everything apart. I pulled this all out, cleaned everything, uh, took a wire brush, pulled all these electrical connections out, cleaned them off. They did have some rust. This is the original unit from 2008. You can see the sticker. The manufacturer is 924 20, uh, 2007. So this is the original unit, still works. Um, and I, I just couldn't get it for a long time. It would not go on to the point where I called an RV tech and I was gonna have him come out. Uh, he, would, he would have been here yesterday. And 150 bucks just for the service call plus 150 an hour uh, to diagnose plus parts so if you guys are looking to get into a field where you make some damn good money an rv tech is the way to go anyway um i made an appointment with me really nice guy he was even trying to walk me through it like he's like it'd be a shame if it's something so simple and i come out here and i gotta charge you but so he was trying to run me through some stuff um and i took a couple pointers on what he said and i was you know, like i said i was cleaning everything finally I took this bolt off and these there's two bolts underneath here that hold this whole assembly into the wall uh, oh and this one right here and uh, there's the prong in there that you can probably see let me adjust this camera uh, see that glowing red thing that's the igniter now it has to be gapped perfectly kind of like a spark plug in order for it to put the right amount of voltage out or something like that I guess to ignite the flame so, <clears throat> oh, and I say don't touch that with your fingers because the oils will automatically destroy it, apparently. That's what I'm hearing online, and that's what the RV tech said. So I was using a pair of pliers and just adjusting it. I'd put it back in. I'd try to reignite it, you know, and it didn't work. I'd adjust it again. So finally, I got it. <laughs> so now it's going. I called him. I said, I, I really appreciate your time and info. I canceled the appointment, obviously, <clears throat> and I saved myself. Uh, at least $300 because it would have been probably $300 plus parts for him to fix it. So that's on. That was my first dilemma. Let me lock this. It's kind of hard to do with one hand. Okay. The next thing I got, I was out today, this morning. I came home, went inside to go walk the dogs. It was really hot. It was cool since I've, we've been up here in Jersey. Now it's 90... I think the high today is 92, and it's going to be like 95, 97 for the next couple days. It's going to get really hot. Anyway, went inside, the air conditioner was off, the dogs were panting. It wasn't like super, super hot, but it was like stale air. And I'm like, oh crap. So I go, I run over to everything, I'm checking everything, there's no power to the entire RV. I'm like, alright, well I guess there's a power outage. Well, my neighbor's air conditioner was on, so it was running, so he has power. And uh, I started up the onboard generator, and that supplied power. So I'm like, all right, good. At least the, in you know, the inverter's not failing or anything like that. I think the owner before me put a brand new inverter in this, so it should be good to go for a long time. Um, next thing I checked, let's walk over there. Actually, yeah, hold on. Let's see. Ugh. You gotta be careful not to step on all this crap. So I walked over to here. And I checked on this. Now, as you can see right now, I don't have a surge protector plugged in. I'm really nervous, guys. <laughs> um, but the reason I don't have a surge protector in is because we had a surge. And when you have a surge and you have a surge protector, it will kill the power. Whoa, I'm falling here. <laughs> uh, it'll kill the power to the coach. And it'll stop that electricity blast at the surge protector rather than going through your power always your inverter and making your inverter blow up and then you gotta buy an inverter and i don't know how much they are but they are not cheap 
Plus then I have to get that $150 service call and her $150 an hour RV tech out here to install it. So totally worth it. Now I'm going to show you the one I have. This is not a sponsored video. I'm just showing you guys what I personally use. And uh, we've been using it since I've had this RV and it's worked great. And it's clearly saved our butt because now everything is working inside the RV. But this surge protector is a one-time use thing. Whereas, you know, if it, if it gets uh, a surge, it's done. Some of them, if you want to pay five, $600 for them, I think some of them have a reset button, but I personally don't want to spend five or $600. So this is the one I use. This is a Progressive Industries, which is a really good name brand in the RV industry for uh, surge protectors. 30 amp portable surge protector. This part plugs into the pedestal. And then um, this thing has a cover on it and you can lift it. Plug your 30 amp in. This will light up green and blue and that will say, you know, okay, the pedestal is good. There's no faulty wires. There's no grounds. There's no reverse polarity. Um, and then it's safe to turn the power off, plug your RV in, and then turn the power back on, and you'll have safe, clean power, and you'll be protected from the surge. Now, when we opened this, guys, <coughs> um, this thing was still smoking. So, I don't know how long ago it happened, but this thing was still really, really hot. And, uh, must have been a really nasty surge, because like I said, it was, there was smoke coming all out of here, all out of the top, all out of the prongs. And you can see it blew. That thing is melted. It did burn my my plug a little bit. It put like a black char onto it. It didn't fry it. Um, so it's still usable, obviously. We have the air conditioner on right now, the lights, everything's working. Um, but this is shot. This is unfortunately no good anymore. I did go ahead and order one online. Um, this is $78 on Amazon. Totally worth it. This is the one I would go with. They make a 50 amp version too. I think it's a little bit more money. Um, but this is the one I personally use. I ran to the RV store over here. They only have the four or $500 ones. I, I just had no interest in buying that. Um, so we got on Amazon and ordered it. It's gonna be here in two days. I even tried going to the camp store over here. I thought maybe maybe they would have one. They don't, because I'm, I'm nervous running it without it, obviously. So anyway, so we got two, two days to waste. It's gonna be here on the 7th and uh, we'll be plugged in and safe again. By the way, I don't know if you guys noticed in the last video, I'm gonna go ahead and apologize now. Um, my GoPro, which I'm still shooting on right now, was having, I don't know if it's a software or a hardware issue, but it was glitching and the screen would make different colors. It was really weird. And uh, I'm not sure what happened. And then the sound got a little weird, but I reset it, I did a factory reset. Um, and I haven't had an issue since, knock on wood, so hopefully it fixes it. I really don't want to have to go out and spend another $350 on a GoPro, but of course I will, that way I can keep up with you guys. But if this thing will keep on ticking, that'd be great, because I've had this one for, I don't know, four or five years now, since we've do, been doing RV transport, so this camera's been a while, uh, around a while. Anyway, next upgrade we're gonna do, guys, this skylight. Um, as you can see, the fairing, or the bezel as they call it, it's starting to crack. It's been cracked actually since we bought this RV. I think it's a, a lot of it has to do with like the heat and the RV bouncing around and stuff like that. Plus, from the outside, this one is super tall. Um, I just feel like it catches wind. I don't know. I just, and it's ugly. So we went ahead and bought a new one. We bought a clear one. Now there's pros and cons to obviously having a clear one. I didn't, I didn't want a black one because that attracts the heat. It heats up. It radiates the heat back down into here. Um, and Sam wanted a white one so we could just kind of look up and maybe see the nice sky outside or whatever. This one is like a smoked lens so you can't really uh, see out of it. But the clear is going to be really nice. It's going to let a lot of light in. And during the day, like this is with no lights on. So you could just see how much light it lets into the RV. And if we don't want that, we have this. This is a skylight cover, so I'm not going to do it, but you just jam it up in there. Oh, you flip it around this way. It has a heat reflective side on it. And you shove it in there, and it makes the whole entire thing black and dark in case you want to sleep in or whatever. Or if it's a really hot day and you just want to keep that heat out, that's a great way to do it. You can buy them on Amazon. I'll see if I can find a link. But definitely something good to have. But I'm, I'm excited. We're going to get a clear, we're going to get a new bezel, and then we're going to get a clear 
um, inner and a clear outer skylight. It's also gonna be quite a bit more lower profile. That way it doesn't catch as much wind. You know, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm sure I'm not gonna get 30 miles to the gallon after I swap it out, but um, I just feel like it'll be less of an eyesore too, because it's ugly. And of course, when I do that, I'll show you guys it's supposed to be here tomorrow. I'll show you guys a full install. They're super easy if you ever wanted to do your own or if you have like a shuttle bus or a school bus and you want to install it. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. All right, guys, I got good news. I got three pieces of good news. Are you ready? So far, I haven't had an issue with this camera. I probably just jinxed myself, but I'm going to tell you anyway. I haven't had an issue. No flickering, nothing. Hopefully, I don't see it on playback once I go into the editing stages, but we'll see what happens. Um, good piece of news number two, our new 30 amp surge protector came in. Now what I notice here is it says lifetime warranty. I don't know, I mean, we bought the surge protector probably 10, 11 months ago when we first bought this RV. So I probably didn't pay attention too much to the box, but I'm gonna give them a call and find out about that one and see if it's still good enough. So yeah, this is the old one, the one that's all fried and burnt out. And then this is the brand new one. It'd be nice if they send me out another one. I mean, I just bought this one, but I'll gladly have that one as a backup because for the last two days, Sam and I have been stressing it running, especially the air conditioner and being plugged in without a, um, you know, without a surge protector because it could really do thousands of dollars worth of damage to your RV. So they're just worth having, especially when they're, this was $78 on Amazon. I'll put the link down below if you guys are interested, but totally worth having, no brainer. So I figure since I just bought a brand new one and we're gonna do a little mini un quick unboxing, um, this is basically everything you get. You get your owner's manual. This is the plate, the back plate that sits on here. And then you use those screws to screw this in. And then this is your weather protector. This is really nice. This will keep any rainwater out and stuff like that. Cause it's gonna be dangling outside of the power pole where the cover is. So at least you'll still have a cover keeping any water from getting in here or in any electronics. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna bolt this up and then we'll walk over to the power pedestal. All right, so we got our plate on. I just thought I'd zoom in right here and show you real quick. So this green light at the top, I know it's hard to see because it's not illuminated right now, but green means your surge protection is on, which is very, very important. You always want that. That's kind of the whole point of this. Um, blue on, red off means it's the correct wiring. So when you plug this in to a power pedestal and you turn the power breaker on, you should see green and blue illuminated, uh, illuminated, excuse me. And that means you are good to go, kill the power, plug your RV in, and then turn the power back on at the pedestal. If you see blue on and red on, that means you have an open neutral, no good. Blue off, red off, you have an open ground. So if you don't see that blue on, you're in trouble. If you see a red on, you're in trouble. You always want it to just be green and blue on at the same time, and you are good to go. If you have an issue, um, if the power, you know, if it's reading something where it's saying, hey, this is not a good uh, clean power, if you're at a campground, let them know, and uh, they'll either send you to a different site, hopefully, and they won't have somebody come out there to try to diagnose it. Um, but these will save you a ton of time, ton of money, and a ton of aggravation, um, just in case there is an issue. All right, we're over here at the power pedestal. We're plugged in currently with no surge protector, which is a really scary sight. We're gonna kill our power. Make sure you kill your AC and everything. Uh, we're gonna kill the power, turn it off, unplug. You can see it got a little, a little dark. I won't be surprised if in the future I swap this plug out. This is the original one for the RV, so. Um, and then since our power is already off, we're gonna go ahead and take our surge protector plug it straight in make sure it goes straight in you don't want to bend any of those prongs and we're going to flip on our 30 amp because that's what we are if you're 50 amp you'll obviously plug in to flip 50 amp and turn on your 50 amp breaker now we're going to go in here you can already see it it's green and blue so that means we are having good clean safe power no reverse polarity or open grounds so we're going to go ahead kill the breaker <clears throat> Ow, I just burnt myself, can you see that? That plug is really, really hot. That was stupid, I should have known better, ow. <laughs> I wish I would've caught that on film, my facial expressions. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna go ahead and plug it. Ugh. Kinda hard to do with you guys here. If you guys could just go home, that'd be great. All right, so we're plugged in. Oh, I hear something sizzling, hold on a minute, guys. Oh. 
But that's the water. I'm having some day. I thought something was going on. It's the water running through the... For some reason, they felt to put the water, like, legit right next to the electrical. So I hear the water running through the pipe. I don't know if you hear it. I thought something was sizzling. <laughs> but we're good. Okay. I'm going to close this. Make sure everything is nice and sealed up. And turn on our breaker. I always double check again, make sure it's still green and blue, which it is. And we're good to go. You can now turn your air conditioner back on and whatever electronics, knowing that you have safe, clean power and you won't blow your RV up. Also, one quick thing worth mentioning, I forgot to mention it to you guys, because I see it a lot of, a lot of times on these RV pages, uh, especially for like newbies. Um, they'll go ahead and they'll buy a surge protector. Maybe they'll buy this one. Maybe they'll buy like the $500 one. Um, but they'll always ask, how do you secure your power, you know, your um, thing to the pole? Because some people suck and apparently they'll steal it. Um, but this one comes with a lock. So this is a steel. I don't know if it's steel, but it feels pretty heavy. Uh, and you can either put a chain or like a bicycle cable through it and lock it to the pedestal somehow. And that'll be good to go. If I can be per perfectly honest with you guys, I have never once locked up my uh, storage protector, mainly because it's just another step. It's another hassle. Uh, I've never had an issue with anybody stealing it. I mean, we've been all over the country with it. Um, but maybe if you have a $500 one, you would. I don't know. I mean, would it suck to get my $78 one stolen? Yeah, I'd be pretty tight. But um, I just, like I said, I've never had an issue. So I guess that's personal, personal choice. Yeah, let's go with that. Next on the to-do list, <laughs> I got the skylight, guys. Oh, I got this fan going outside. It's, it's a scorcher. It's gonna be in the 90s all this week here in uh, New, uh, New Jersey. Should have just stayed home in Florida. So, got the nice new skylight. It's in there, it's clear. And I got the new inner dome is in this box. And then I got some caulking. When you do this project, you're gonna need self-leveling sealer now i usually use dicor products such as this one however they didn't have white they only had black and i don't know about you but i didn't want to put anything black on my roof because i'm not trying to attract heat i'm trying to reflect heat so this is white this is alpha what do they call it alpha systems they're they're a pretty good brand i've used them they're really not much different however dicor has been around quite a bit longer um but i'm going to use i bought four tubes and i'll go on the top layer and then one tube sits on the inside of the skylight before you press it down and that goes over the holes and that'll seal that water for when the screws go into the roof i'll show you guys when i get up there but we're going to start by pulling the inner dome down and then i'll put the ladder up we'll hop up i hope you guys aren't catching wind from that fan uh, if you are sorry about that and uh we'll remove the top layer pull that off and we'll be good to go this is a this is a much needed project i've been procrastinating on it it doesn't leak it's just so ugly and when the sun hits it and it emits light down into it it's it's like yellow because the skylight is yellow so it just it doesn't look nice i want i wanted like natural clear light you know from the sun to come in all right here is our hideous old skylight let me pull this out this is our internal skylight thing so when we sleep we're not blinded blinded by the light okay so you can see it's yellowing well maybe you can i don't know but um it's just ugly it's it's cracked in the corners you know it's just from the rv shifting back and forth as we're driving down the road bumping so this is most likely the original skylight from 2008 because that's what year this rv is so we're gonna put a much nicer newer one in and uh and nicer too when i paint the shower yes and then sam is gonna tackle that project we are gonna so this is like yellow i don't know if you can see but it is yellowing. So there was something here. Oh, we had the, we originally had a glass door right here and I hated it because I'm fat and I can't fit in it. <laughs> so we took it down. Now I have way more room. I bring the shower curtain rod out here and I can, I can touch and turn. I don't know if I can touch my toes, but I can move around pretty good. And uh, yeah, so you could see the white difference. It was obviously even brighter than that, but it was kind of that color. Sam's gonna buy this kit on Amazon and you paint it on. And it looks really nice when it's done. Be able to post pictures of it it's on. It's made for boats, but people use it for their RVs. Yeah, and it's meant Top to- sail it's called. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a link down below. And it's meant to go on the plastic, which it's is- It's like marine, which- Right, so 
pretty excited about that upgrade. The shower's gonna look pretty brand new. Anyway, I'm gonna pull my drill out. There's like, uh, I don't know, eight or nine, 10 screws that are holding this in, and then we'll pull the inner dome down, and then we'll hop up top. All right, guys, look at the difference. Look how high this thing is. It's ridiculous. And then the skylight, because the inner skylight is still in there. I mean, the outer skylight, excuse me. So that one's even higher, because it has to clear the inner. It's just so ugly, I hate it. I'm telling you, I'm gonna get like 40 miles to the gallon now, as soon as I swap this out. So you can just see the, the difference in height. So we're gonna, and this and is a very- you see how yellow it really is. Right, so here's the nice finished white, and then this one just yellows over time, plus it's filthy. Um, but I'm gonna pop this one in, and then we'll hop up top, take the top skylight out, and swap it out for that clear one. All right, guys. After saying a couple curse words <laughs> and sweating to death, the new skylight interior part is in. Unfortunately, it didn't come with new hardware. Um, the only issue with that is, you know, it's it's like yellow. It matches the uh, old skylight, which kind of sucks. So I might be on the lookout for some new white hardware. But it went in. I don't want to say perfectly. It didn't line up perfectly. I had to kind of shimmy it around. I had to put some screws on an angle to, for them to grab because this bezel on the edge is a little sh um, not as wide out as the new one is so kind of had to make some modifications but I guess that's what you expect when you're putting a new skylight in in 2023 when the original one was from 2008 so it's all good but now we just got to pull that top one off from the top and we'll be good to go all right guys we're up here on the roof sweating to death um, brought my little mini bower blower out because now and then I like to blow the roof off, keep off all the tree debris. So I'm gonna blow this whole roof off and then we're gonna get started on this ugly skylight. Look how high that thing is, Jesus. Um, first, we're gonna dig around, get all the caulking removed. You wanna get as much caulking removed as possible, if not all of it. And then uh, we'll unscrew the skylight. There's like 4,000 screws that go around. And then that's our nice new skylight. Look how low that low profile. And we'll get that installed and uh, all caulked up. All right, if you guys don't hear from me, I died of a heat stroke because it's like a million freaking degrees out here. So just pulled off the top layer. Obviously still have to clean off all the caulking. Um, but this is the new inner dome that we did from the inside, so it's much more low profile. I'm just gonna clean off all this. I'm gonna use a razor blade very carefully. You do not want to cut the roof. The good thing about our roof is it's TPO, which is like a PVC kind of roof. Um, probably one of the better roofs, much better than a rubber roof. If you're gonna buy an RV, I would preferably look for a roof with either TPO or fiberglass. Those are the two best roofs out there. Oh, man, all right. Yeah, so let me let me scrape all this off and then we'll install that new skylight, redrill it in, and recall. Alright guys, I cleaned up the mating surface where the skylight's gonna sit. So now we're gonna take our caulking gun. We're gonna go all the way around on the edges. And we're gonna go over these holes right here. That way once we put the screws in, it'll suck up some of the caulking and it'll help double lock and secure these holes so that no caulking gets uh, no water gets through. All right, guys, I'm calling this project just about done. So you can see I laid the caulking around it and everything. I'm going to let this sit for a day. And then tomorrow, we're going to get another dry day. So I'm going to check on this tomorrow. If it needs any touch-ups or anything, if it spreads out, um, we'll take care of it. But it looks pretty good. It should be good to go. It looks way better than before. It's such a lower profile, too, which I like. You won't even be able to see this from the roof and uh, it'll let a lot of natural light in, which is really nice too. And here's what it looks like from the inside. Guys, it, I love it. Samantha loves it. I mean, it's, it's a world of a difference. You, know, you can actually see out now and it just lights in natural light rather than like yellow light. It made these walls, well, no, they still look yellow. <laughs> but once we paint it and you get the natural light coming in, it's really gonna look nice in here. It's gonna look like, uh, I don't know if you guys watch Shark Tank, but it'll probably look just as good as Mark Cuban's bathroom. Maybe. 
Let's say, look at all that light. I should just record in here because it lets in so much natural light. <laughs> all right, I'm done. I gotta go shower. I'm gonna put an ending on this vlog so I can get up for you guys, but I hope you guys are doing great and hopefully staying cool. And uh, Sam and I will catch you guys in the next video. Bye guys.